It's a love sculpture, an erotic monument, one of the most famous artworks in the world. It's The Kiss by Auguste Rodin. It's March in London, brilliantly cold, and I'm here to see Rodin's famous sculpture before it's boxed up for its journey. Rodin created The Kiss in the early years of the 20th century, at the height of his fame as a modern sculptor. And in the first decades of its life, The Kiss endured some extraordinary ups and downs. Created in Paris to great acclaim, commissioned by an American collector for his rural England home, where it languished in the coach house for years. Later it was towed by horses to the local town hall for exhibition, where it was covered up by local moral guardians who thought it would excite the desires of those who saw it. But all that changed in 1953 when Tate bought the kiss with the help of the British people. Public love for the great love sculpture. In the years since, the kiss has been endlessly reproduced and pastiched, staged in grand spaces and settings, and inspired many responses from artists. This is Tate's store, a huge high-tech warehouse for art. And I'm here to see for myself why the kiss is so compelling, to find out whether it still gives off some heat. The word kiss doesn't quite do justice to what's happening here. It's an embrace, it's a fusion, it's a mountainous meeting of bodies, and it's not the lips you notice, but the limbs. Reaching, clasping, riding up and over, pulling down, bringing close. He is a guy called Paolo Malatesta, and she is Francesca de Rimini. And they are together, the stars of a 13th century tale of love and adultery and murder. They're reading a romantic story together. They begin an affair, but Francesca's husband finds out. So this is the kiss that gets them both killed. And we see now why the kiss had to be big. What is more fleeting, more in the moment than a kiss? Yet by making it large and making it from marble, Rodin shows how one moment can become massive, monumental, unforgettable. I wasn't sure how I would react to the kiss today because I've seen it reproduced in print so many times. But I've got to say, up close, it has amazing directness and heft and sensuous power. It's a bit like a grand old song, a love song of course, that catches you off guard and sweeps you up again in all those old grand emotions. That's the thing about art, and especially the art of the nude. You have to see it in the flesh.